Pakistan acclaims the transfer of British power as Mr. Jinnah, Governor General of the New Dominion, arrives at the Constituent Assembly in Karachi. <laughs> Guests of honour in the Muslim capital were Lord and Lady Mountbatten, carrying out one of their last viceregal duties before the partition of India took effect. Addressing the assembly, Lord Mountbatten first read a message from the king. I send you my greetings and warmest wishes. Great responsibilities lie ahead of you and your leaders. May the blessing of the Almighty sustain you in all your future tasks. Then followed a personal word of goodwill from the Viceroy himself, while Mr. Jenner's sister and Lady Mountbatten shared this historic moment. In reply, Mr. Jenner said, We are parting, friends, and I sincerely hope we shall remain friends. A gesture reflecting the feelings of the whole state as India's last viceroy and Pakistan's first governor general drive together through the capital. Later, the whole party appeared again before the cameras at the governor general's house. Meanwhile, in Delhi, the stage was set for British rule to give place to the new dominion of India. All thoughts were centred round the Constituent Assembly on this, the eve of independence. August the 14th draws to a close. And with the approach of midnight, the president, Dr. Prasad, bids the old India farewell. Now the premier, Pandit Nehru, addresses the assembly. At the stroke of the midnight hour, he says, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. And so, within the frontiers of a vast territory, two dominions take shape and begin their separate lives on this memorable day. Back in Karachi comes the swearing in of Mr. Jinnah as Governor General of Pakistan. Among the great company who witnessed the ceremony were the Commanders in Chief of the Navy, Army, and Air Force. Following the swearing in of Mr. Jinnah, members of his cabinet came forward in turn to take the oath of office. The green and silver flag is hoisted, and Muhammad Ali Jinnah does homage to the birth of Pakistan. And so once more to Delhi, as Lord and Lady Mountbatten arrive at the Durbar Hall. Here, the former Viceroy dedicates himself to a new task, as he's sworn in as the Indian Dominion's first Governor General. Now, beginning with Pandit Nehru, members of the Cabinet are sworn in by Lord Mountbatten himself. With the close of the ceremony came a tremendous ovation for Lord and Lady Mountbatten and the Indian leaders for the state drive to the assembly. Huge crowds ran to greet the cabinet members on their arrival. Sadar Patel, Minister for Home Affairs, is followed by Sadar Baldev Singh, Minister of Defence. Malana Azad, Minister of Education, and lastly, the Premier of India, Pandit Nehru. Again, the chairs rang out for the approach of the Governor-General's carriage.
Yes, for Lord and Lady Mountbatten, this was indeed a people's ovation, a national tribute to their long months of hard and unceasing work. Not least among the rejoicings were those of the children of Delhi, for whom Lord and Lady Mountbatten had a special treat in the form of a surprise gift of sweets. Moving through the packed fairground, the Governor-General and Lady Mountbatten shared with these young Indians the joy of this national celebration. <music> Truly, the Day of Independence has also been a day of goodwill and a crowning triumph to Lord Mountbatten's greatest task.